Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what do we talk about? Well, I want to talk about the methodology and action, specifically exactly how I make money, and that's going to make a lot, lot of sense in just a few minutes. And I'm going to show that through the mystery charts, follow up. I have a new mystery chart this week, which I'll actually reveal for you. Recent setups and money and position management. And that's going to make a lot of sense once we get into it. By the way, housekeeping, I do take requests. It makes my job a lot easier. As I say, each week it's a lot easier if I know what I'm going to talk about ahead of time. Also, I do a show on Thursday nights. It's called Dave Landry's The Week in Charts. And you can register at DaveLandry.com slash webinar register even if the link is old and the point i want to make there is if it's something that i can't fit into this venue i could fit that into the weekly charts which is a little bit more open-ended if you need to reach me for whatever reason questions etc davelander.com slash contact also if you want the slides from this presentation and all the other presentations combined which include money management setups and a plethora of other things go to davelander.com slash stock charts and i'll send you enough stuff to keep you busy for quite a while get to know me first is what i believe <laughs> now let's talk about exactly how i make money trading the reason i use the word exactly is <laughs> i meet somebody and they're like what are you doing i tell them they can and they go okay whatever and then if they get to know me a little better they'll see me around the house never leaving the house and shorts and a t-shirt and usually a little disheveled and compression socks and sometimes they might even see me with a sport coat on but still have shorts and compression socks <laughs> and they wonder what exactly do i do i'm like dressed like a a bum one day and a bermuda bermuda businessman another and usually i just say well i buy things that go up and sell things that go down now there's a little more to it than that and the reason I was thinking about whether or not to show you some of these things, it's like, you know, I've been showing a lot of these examples lately that worked out. And hopefully I'm not jinxing myself. Looks like today is not a good day. But that notwithstanding, things have been working out fairly well lately. And I keep showing the same things over and over. But this is exactly what I do. And for the most part, there are a few more advanced topics and if you go in and watch the last show, I think I did, I talked about opening gap reversals and some other things. And then in my webinars on Thursday, like last Thursday and Thursday before, I occasionally talk about something like options. But for the most part, the crux of the methodology is buying these pullbacks. And I'd say probably 90 something percent of all the mystery charts I show or just that. Now, with that said, let's hop into the mystery charts and show the methodology in action. So this one is not a mystery chart. It was going to be a mystery chart for this week, but it triggered as I was getting ready to go live here. So if you look down at the bottom of this spreadsheet, this is a daily trading service I put out each day. I put out a video four to six minutes or so every day on where I'm finding opportunities. And then I update the spreadsheet along with the any action that needs to be taken on the setups or the positions in this case anyway the new setup was sgml it's a buy based on 100k accounts that's risking two percent of that 100k would be two thousand dollars and by the way this tracking spreadsheet is included if you go to davelander.com slash stock charts it's included some of the goodies that i sent out in case you want to track your own trades or follow methodology similar to mine with similar money management. But anyway, based on that, hundred based on 100K, 597 shares, obviously you'd round that up to 600, or if you want a little less risk, maybe four or 500 shares. Entry, is seven, entry at 1735, protective stop at 14. That's a risk of 3.35 points with an IPT, initial profit target that is, also a 3.35 points, and I'll flesh that out in a, a few minutes of 2070. So this is what it looks like on the charts. Nice uptrend followed by a pullback, which is the crux of most of my setups. A lot of things I do are just flat out generic pullback. Sometimes we'll do something like a trend knockout or there might be a bow tie or some other pattern. But for the most part, they're all pretty much pullback in nature. By the way, the only thing I think I do that isn't 
probably couldn't be qualified as a pullback would be something like an intraday trade, such as the aforementioned opening gap reversal, or an IPO trade, which sometimes those patterns, such as buy at B, can have a little bit of a breakout characteristic. Anyway, in this case, back to generic pullback. Entry was there. It triggered this morning. Unfortunately, so far, not so good. If you were looking to take this trade, and this is not a direct recommendation, I'm just for educational purposes, right? What I tell clients, if they miss the original entry and it comes back in like this, don't try to beat the system and catch that falling knife because this thing might just have triggered and, God forbid, just implode on us, right? What you should do is wait for that second entry just in case that first entry was a fake out. Years ago, by the way, I met someone, and uh, I, I can say who he is, Kevin Haggerty, and he told me that when the new guys come to the office, they don't let them take the first signal. They have to take a secondary signal. So something would trigger, and then when it re-triggers, they would let the new guys take it. So your accuracy is going to be a lot higher by doing that. Unfortunately, you're going to miss the mother of all trends every now and then. But if you are newer to trading and you do miss some of these entries like this, whether you decided to take them or not, then a second entry would be above the high, provided, of course, in this case, like it's come back in. So anyway, entry for this one would be above this high right here. So let's take a look at the last mystery chart that I showed. This was a few weeks back. I skipped a couple of shows. I was doing a webinar for my Italian brethren, and I needed a little time to work on that. In case you was wondering where I've been over the last couple of weeks. Nice little uptrend here, followed by a pullback. Entry was here. Stop was down here. Initial profit target up here. And that stock was SST. And by the way, the mystery charts come directly, I would say, I think everyone so far has, has come directly from my, or came directly from my trading service. And you can look at those archives at www.davelander.com slash archives. So here's the parameters. You can see SST it was a buy, 500 shares based on a hypothetical 100K account, although I do take these trades, even though they're quote unquote hypothetical and for educational purposes only. Entry was here, protective stop, 1175, IPT of 1975. That's a risk of four points. That's what it called for because it's a volatile stock and the pattern is a pullback. Now let's take a look at what happened. The entry was here. The initial profit target was here. And the trailing stop ended up like this, getting stopped out at 22. Now, if you take a look at the trade from a mechanical standpoint, and by the way, that service tracking sheet, when I track that live, I track it from a mechanical standpoint. So if I say, hey, get in at 16 or 1575, whatever the case may be, that's the entry that I use in the spreadsheet. Now, some cases, it might gap above that entry and come back in. I might use a little bit higher entry, like the second entry I talked about earlier getting in. But in order to avoid any confusion, everything is tracked mechanically in a trading service. And a lot of times I'll just trade it straight on a straight mechanical basis. But in case like this, where you got this huge gap overnight and it begins to really take off, I will manage it a little bit differently other than just on a purely mechanical basis. So anyway, this is what it did. If you were to follow everything just purely mechanically, $2,563 less than a week and that's based on a 100k account so two and a half percent gain is much better than a poke in the eye and again that's following everything on a purely mechanical basis now in this account i put on a thousand shares and here are all the trades that i took now a lot of there's a lot of option trades in here and that's something that I really is, is really beyond the scope of this show that I want to get into. But if you go in and watch the last two shows that I did for the week in charts, and those links will be put down below, you can check out those shows for a lot more detailed conversation on that. And I actually failed miserably in some of those options, and the reason was they didn't have the options at the strike that I needed just yet because there was no need to write options that far out, I guess, because the stock was... 20 points lower at the time. But anyway, this thing went up 100% overnight. And if you take all the trades, including some screw-ups that I made in here based on some of these options, I think I had like $5,000 worth of option losses. It still turned out pretty good. 
10K as you can see. And even if you, even if you divide that in two, so 5K is still better than the $2,500 follow mechanically. And I'm pretty proud of the $2,500 follow mechanically too. So if that's how you follow the trade, that's fantastic with me too. So just want to show you real quick, every now and then you do capture one of these things and they take off overnight. And it's pretty exciting, but that's that's not the, the ultimate goal here. And I'll circle back to that. <laughs> By the way, here's why money management and position management is so important. The reason I laughed at circle back, I, I saw a clip where <laughs> press secretary, every every question, I'll circle back on that. I'll circle back on that. I'll circle back on that. So I thought that was kind of, that's stuck in my head, I guess. Anyway, so here, getting back to the trade, again, entry was here. And then partial profits, half of the position is taken off here. And then we got stopped out here at 22. And overall, as you can see, that's a decent trade, right? 2580 again, follow mechanically. But if you take a look at what happened since, okay, if you would have not implemented a money management plan by taking profits and stopping out, it would have turned into a losing trade. And fortunately, what I did, if you go in and watch the last couple of weeks of charts, if you could stand it, <laughs> I was able to trail a stop higher intraday and, and parlay some of that money into some options and then fortunately cash out on most of them. But I did, again, fail miserably on some of them. But overall, I did okay. It's funny, in this business, it's like you would think I would be bragging about this, making this 10K in this one account. But in reality, I was kind of upset because I lost so much money on the options and it would have been a lot more had I not lost money on those. But it happens. Spell with a silent SH. Now, these type of positions where they take off overnight are a blast. But believe it or not, and don't get me wrong, I like to catch one every now and then. It's a lot of fun and a lot of excitement. But I'm not trading for fun and I'm not trading for excitement. I'm trading to make money. And the real money is in those longer term trends when you're able to get into position and hang on for a long, long time. But thinking along those lines, it got me thinking that it would be cool to talk a little bit about investor versus trader. I know, cool. You probably want to party with me, party with me right? <laughs> now, I don't remember exactly where I read this. I read this fairly recently. And it's, in prob it's probably in one of these behavioral finance or behavioral science books or a trading psychology book. And as soon as I can find it, I will give the author credit on this. But paraphrasing, because I couldn't remember exactly how they said it. They said an investor must determine the value of the investment over the lifetime of the investment. Now, I'm not a real estate <laughs> investor, but I can give you an example of a potential or hypothetical, at least, in real estate. The Hurricane Ida wiped out the house across the street from us, and it's been condemned, I guess, for de uh, demolition. And, you know, my wife and I, a couple of cocktails on the front porch, got to talk, and it's like, well, we could buy that lot and demo that house and, and build a, a house on that property, and we can rent that property out, and yada, yada, yada. Well, if you think about that, and again, I'm not a real estate guy, but to me, you would have to figure out what it would cost for the lot, which is pretty simple to figure out what it would cost to demo the house, what it would cost to build the house. Now there's some variables in that, but that's all pretty much fixed. And then in a case like this, you probably want to get a loan on that because it is an investment and you figure out what you'd have to put down, what your loan would be. And also things like, okay, would real estate continue to climb in value? And from what I've seen over here, at least recently, houses have gone up about 20% in the last year or so. So, so far, knock on wood, my new home has been a good investment. Now, the other thing you would have to think about is, could you find a good and stable tenant? Could you continue to collect rents for in excess of the mortgage and could you also cover the inevitable maintenance down the line so there's a whole plethora of things that would have to be covered by the way one of you was saying you like when i use the word plethora it means a lot uh <laughs> anyway there's a lot to figure out so if you're thinking about a stock as an investor as a buy and hold investor a lot of those things sort of equate Okay, what's the competition for this 
company? Can this company continue to have their current earnings in the future? Could competition arise? Could their technology, if it's technology related, become obsolete? What's the, bar what's the barrier to entry for this business? Could somebody come along tomorrow because it's non-proprietary and do the same thing and put this company out of business? So there's a lot of things to think about if you are a buy and hold type of an investor. Now, if you're a trader, all you have to do, <laughs> I say all you have to do, it reminds me when I was back in the country and we had an older home and it's like anything you would do seemed to metastasize into something much bigger. You know, my wife would say, okay, all you gotta do is go with your wrench on this pipe that's leaking and that'll fix it right out. Well, of course, the pipe will break and then you have to run to the plumbing store and then put in a coupler and all of a sudden now that you've got more pressure going down the line because the pipe was half clogged and then you've got just a lot of problems down the line. But if you boil it all down, all you got to do is capture a price movement based on your time horizon. So from where I stan it seems like a trader makes a lot more sense than being an investor and as we just saw earlier it again this is the ultimate goal but it's nice when it happens over a several day period to make a lot a lot of money on a stock so a trader must capture a price move based on his time horizon now the real money is in longer term trends but so is the risk drawdowns are horrible and accuracy is abysmal. And I did a lot of mechanical testing back in the day, and it seems like a longer term trend following system is only gonna be right about 27% of the time. I would never be shot on a Friday, but if you go in and look at the turtles, they happen to be in the right place at the right time with a very simple breakout type of system, but their drawdowns were abysmal, and a lot of them, a lot of the turtles have blown up since but you can't take away what they did so again i'm not trying to be shot on friday but they make a good example as to how hard it is to be a longer term trader so i'm not again taking away from them. i'm just saying it's a very hard way to trade but that's where the real money is as i preach now shorter term trading is more accurate and i'm i'm slotted as a swing trader but i will swing trader meaning meaning that i will hold positions somewhere between one day in a week but the other flip side of what i do is i will hold much 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 longer if things work in my favor but in as a general statement shorter term trading is much less risky but the problem is you don't make enough to cover the occasional spankings go back a couple of slides and look at that sst trade let's say that it didn't hit the profit target okay so we were holding a full position and then overnight it gets whacked five or six points well, all of a sudden, you're down a lot of money on that trade. So, yeah, it's exciting and it's a lot of fun when they take off overnight and you make a lot of money overnight. But that doesn't happen all that often. And occasionally, as I just said, you will get spanked on the position. So it does create a dilemma. And the way I solve for that dilemma, as I say quite often, is to trade for both short-term and longer term gains. So these shorter term trades can turn into longer term investments, but only if they continue to perform. If you think about it, some ways trading is investing, but you have a performance characteristic to it. Now, obviously you can't rush out and buy a house and you're halfway through building it and you're gonna rent this house out or whatever, and all of a sudden the market crashes you're in a bit of a pickle. You know, maybe there's some cases where you should just quit, okay, and, and forget about the sunk cost. But more than likely, you're going to follow through on that. Whereas in trading, when things begin to go wrong, you not only should get out, you must get out. You have to get out of the way. I got spanked on a couple this morning. I had to just get out of the way. Now, if you think about investing you have to come up with some sort of theme, okay? Well, real estate is doing well. I think real estate's gonna to continue to do well. I'm gonna buy a rental house because houses are in such demand around here, especially since a hurricane knocked out quite a few that I can't seem to go wrong with that 
type of thinking. That theme makes a lot of sense. When it comes to trading, themes can be very difficult and dangerous. For instance, we held Academy Sports for a long time. And the reason we probably made a lot of money on that trade, and I think it was a former mystery chart, but the reason we made a lot of money on that trade over a year or so was because everyone was sick and tired of being cooped up from the pandemic and they wanted to buy kayaks and outdoor equipment and and get the flock out the house, right? <laughs> now, I didn't say, oh, I'm going to buy Academy. It was actually hard for me to buy it because I was thinking, geez, it's a brick and mortar retailer. And I didn't even think about that six months from now and let's think and let's be honest okay nobody was thinking when when the pandemic first hit that an outdoor company is going to do fantastic because people are going to be sick of sick and tired of being cooped up and i remember some of the early days of pandemic it's kind of like am i gonna die in this house <laughs> you weren't you weren't thinking much about kayaking right <laughs> but anyway the, the point i'm trying to get to is through trading, a swing to intermediate term trader can find investment themes as they play out and not the other way around. The example I'm going to show you now was a former mystery chart, and it's a coal company. By the way, I had a client who didn't take this trade because it was a coal stock. Now, if you're paying me to find setups, I'm going to find the best setups I can. And whether or not I like coal companies, I'm just going to close my eyes, and if it looks like a company I should buy, then I'm going to buy it. Now, logically, this didn't make a whole lot of sense because the you had an administration that's not a big fan of coal, but it was set up, and I thought it was worthwhile. So here's the actual slide going back in time, and this was in early 2021 where I showed this. It made a cup and handle. The pattern I was more excited about, though, was the actual thrust higher followed by a pullback and the entry was right in here stop down here and ipt up there take a look at the pullback you can see nice thrust higher followed by a pullback again there's that reoccurring pattern entry here stop down here initial profit target up here and let's take a look at what happened so it goes along for a while here it takes a while it gets fairly close to that profit target pulls back a little bit but then fortunately hits that profit target and at this point, we take a one point profit off, and the initial trade was a thousand, was 2,000 shares. So we take off 1,000 shares, bought a 100K account, okay? So you make 1% on the first loaf, and then you continue to trail a stop on the remainder. And as this company, or as the stock goes higher, you begin to trail that stop higher, not on a one for one basis, but you let that gradually loosen up to capture that longer term trend. And you can see the stop is a long ways away now, but even if it stopped out, it's still many times higher percentage-wise than where we got in. So this is where the real money is in these longer-term trades and being able to, through the money management, have a short-term trade turn into a free position, so to speak. One way of looking at it is the market sort of pays for your trading. That short-term trading allows you, when you're blessed, of course, to establish a free position, so to speak. And that's the secret to longer term success is establishing as many free positions as possible. Charlie Kirk, when he saw my money management, he called it free rolling. So in a case like this, at least as of yesterday, this position was up 256%, $12,550 plus another $1,000. So that's 13.5% on the overall account and you can see here it is in a portfolio based on a snapshot of yesterday's spreadsheet you can see i bought it 2000 at 494 looks like i sold a little bit early and i think that was, was because it spiked close it spiked close to that profit target there was 400 dollars in some sort of dividend or distribution so that's a little icing on the cake on that one so we add all that up And it turned out to be a pretty good little trade. That's the first half of the trade. And then the second half still has $12,500 open. So, so far, thirteen six sixty and counting. And let's just hope that continues. 
So let's take a look at RES. This is an energy company. Nice little trend higher. Very persistent trend. Also an accelerating trend. Go in and watch the week of charts from last week for a little bit more on why I like the setup. There's your pullback. Entries here. Stop is here. Initial profit target up here. And you can see it didn't do a whole lot at first, but then it began to take off nicely. And it tagged the initial profit target. And now we're free rolling on this one, trailing a stop higher. And I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully we'll be in this thing for a long, long time. So once again, we're free, lo free rolling on that position. Well, that's all the time I have for this week. That's exactly what I do. I hope you find some value in that. Any questions, you can follow up with me at DaveLander.com slash contact. If you want the slides from this presentation and all the other presentations, plus a bunch of other stuff to keep you busy for a while, go to DaveLander.com slash stock charts. I'll throw in all three of my books in PDF format to that, too. I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.